because what is about to happen is the most violent thing you've been through in your entire <laughs> life, and the most the most dangerous thing you've been through been through in your entire life. I'm gonna waste things in my pocket. Um, and in less than the time that I've been talking to you, that's how long it takes to get to space. From from lying on your back. Um, with nothing in your head but a, a huge focus of things that might happen and the dreams that took you there, in eight minutes and 42 seconds, you are in orbit. And the way it works is you're laying on your back and um, and you're watching everything and you're focusing, you know, what would you think about? You know, mostly you focus on, on uh, what's coming next. And we actually uh, have a saying in the astronaut business, uh, which is, there is no problem so bad that you can't make it worse. <laughs> and, and, and the space shuttle has 500 switches in it. And so you can easily turn a minor problem into death just with, with one switch thrown. So that's going through your mind. And the way that we uh, sort of counteract that is if there's a quiet moment, you know, if the four of you were sitting on the flight deck of the shuttle, and you told a few jokes and you're sitting there, and then someone would say, okay, what's the next thing that's gonna kill us? <laughs> and that's, that's a really common thing to say when you're inside a spaceship cockpit, because um, there is an unlimited number of distractions, but the only thing that really matters is what you're doing right now and what you're gonna do next. Nothing else actually matters. And, and if you are not completely focused, and there's four people on the flight deck of the shuttle, if the four of you are not, if you haven't stripped away, you know, oh, I didn't pay that bill, and oh, that rental car, I hope they didn't see the ding in it, and oh, Jesus, the dog, you need to ignore all of that stuff and recognize what is the next thing that's gonna kill us? And how, what's it gonna look like? And how am I gonna react? And how can we keep it from happening? If it starts to happen, what, what are the symptoms gonna be? How are we gonna get to the right page? And how are the four of us going to negotiate it so that we can successfully get to the next event and get this spaceship to orbit. And I'm, you, you are never more focused in your entire life than you are in that ship getting ready to go. And the clock ticks down, um, the vehicle comes alive underneath you. It's so cool, five minutes before launch, the pilot reaches up uh, to the right. There's three big heavy switches that the pilot throws and those um, energize the hydraulic system. And the beauty of that is it suddenly creates high pressure red hydraulic fluid that pumps down into all the veins of the space shuttle. And it like, it, it gives it palpable life underneath you. The vehicle um, like pulses, like someone just gave it a heartbeat. And, and then three and a half minutes before launch, we use that uh, hydraulic fluid to test that everything's gonna work. So we move the big rudder on the back and the elevons on the belly and then the huge um, engines, the nozzles, the three of them on the back that, that look like big church bells, and they all swing at the same time. And so as a result of having thrown those three switches, the vehicle now moves under you like, like a, I don't know if at the fair, if you've ever got on an elephant and you know, it gets up underneath you or it's, it's like, it's like suddenly this, the building has come to life underneath you and is moving in this gigantic fashion. It feels like that. And then the clock's ticking down. Um, there's a bunch of little last minute things we go through. What's the next thing that's gonna kill me? Pay attention, I'm ready. And then 30 seconds before launch, the vehicle is completely ready. You no longer need Florida. You no longer need Houston. The vehicle is autonomous. And 15 seconds before launch, these little um, like firework sparklers start spraying in the back just in case we've leaked any hydrogen gas because we don't want to have a big uh, pressure thing <laughs> at the start. You want to get the hydrogen burned off. And then six seconds before launch, the engines start to light. And um, it's just those three engines. The shuttle has five engines. It's, it's like a hybrid. Um, extremely fuel inefficient hybrid. <laughs> but, but you like the three engines, those three liquid engines first. And um, we weigh about four and a half million pounds sitting there and they only generate one and a half million pounds of thrust. So it's not enough to get you off the ground, but you wanna make sure those engines are working because if they aren't working, then you, know, then you wanna shut down and abort and, and not go. So you light those ones early and they're not up the middle, they're, they're, they're off the side of, of the center where you're suspended. So it's like some gigantic 
monster has come with a crowbar and now starts to bend your whole vehicle with the off-center forceless things and the whole shuttle sways forward. You could feel yourself, if NASA calls it a twang, and you twang forward and then the vehicle gets to its sort of uh, elastic limit until it sort of peaks all the way forward and then it comes back elastically. It takes six seconds until it hits vertical. And then when it hits dead vertical, um, you've got those three engines up at 100%. And then the two huge white rockets, which are an entirely different type of rocket. They're just uh, a solid tube, 180 feet long of high explosive, uh, solid. And we light both of them simultaneously. There are eight huge bolts that we're holding it to the ground. And, and they have gigantic nuts on them. The nuts are about this big around, and we have pyrotechnic um, charges in each one of those bolts. And as you hit T0, the, the 16 little pyrotechnic charges all explode. It cuts all of those eight bolts simultaneously so that you can slip free of the eight huge bolts that were holding the shuttle up, and it starts. And you're laying on your back. And by the time you clear the tower, you're going 100 miles an hour, straight up. You go through the speed of sound, straight up in 45 seconds accelerating faster than chuck yeager accelerating straight up in 45 seconds and the vehicle is immensely powerful uh it's hard it's hard to think about what the numbers mean because you know i can tell you that it's got seven million pounds of thrust but you know what does that mean um there's a new uh, commercial on tv i don't know if you've seen it for the jaguar the new Jaguar, really high powerful car. And uh, the announcer's got one of those, uh, the new Jaguar. <laughs> it has 550 horsepower. The space shuttle has 80 million horsepower. <laughs> 80 million. And, and it burns fuel, the hybrid, it burns fuel at 12 tons a second. <laughs> it's just like, it, it's just stupid. Uh, <laughs> raw brute force. And it is such an ugly, primitive um, way to go. But it's also the best vehicle we have ever built. The most complex and capable flying machine humanity has ever come up with. And, and it's old technology. We designed it in the 60s and 70s and we started flying it in the early 80s. It's, it's, it's a real creaky old vehicle by the time we retired it. But at the same time, absolutely magnificent. And, and it is hurling you to space and shaking you, those big white tubes of explosive, the solid rockets, they're rough, they burn wildly rough, and they shake you like, like you can't believe. You can't even focus on the instruments. You're getting squished in your chair with the acceleration, and your head's kind of pinned, shaking like crazy, so you actually grab onto something to pull your head forward so that your neck can soak up all the vibrations so you can focus on the instruments in front of you. And you're, and you're constantly going, what's the next thing that's gonna kill us? What's the next thing, okay? It's gonna be staging, no, it's gonna be roll program. I see roll program, okay, everything's staging, we're gyroscopes working, okay, we're rolling, we're stopped, good. Next, 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 as you're on your way up. And um, in 70 seconds, you go through Mach 2, uh, the height and speed of the Concorde. In two minutes, you are above the air. You're about 160,000 feet, there's basically no air. Um, and you're going about six and a half times the speed of sound. But now, since you're above the air, there's no more friction, so you can go fast. <laughs> and the big solid rockets fall off, and now you've just got the, the hydrogen, those three church bell engines burning, and it goes from horribly rough to dead smooth, because they just burn a really nice uh, liquid drive. And, and now it's like, like a dragster, if you could imagine a dragster like on oiled concrete, just dead smooth, but with, with uh, steadily increasing acceleration this way, so it's like steadily increasing force on you. Like maybe if you were lying on your back and someone was pouring sand on you, more and more and more sand getting heavier. And so it's like just pushing your lungs forward becomes an effort against the acceleration and the weight of your clothes as, as it squishes you and you're going faster and faster until eventually the vehicle is accelerating so fast that it would tear itself apart. And, and the, the computers do it, but if they don't, we do it manually. And we bring the, all of that thrust, one and a half million pounds of thrust, the, the commander in this case reaches over, ready to pull it back and bring the throttles back to idle just so the vehicle doesn't tear itself in half. And then you're at maximum acceleration and you're getting speed like you wouldn't believe until finally you've drained just about all of the hydrogen and oxygen out of the tank. You're down to about 2% fuel left. The engines tail off, they shut down, and you're weightless. 
Uh, it's a great ride. If you ever get the chance, I really recommend it.